When you imagine the first time America and Russia collaborated in their spaceflight efforts, you may imagine it sometime after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991. Maybe even just imagine the International Space Station as the first time Americans and Russians worked together in space. But it's actually not the case. The first time Americans would meet Russians in space would be during the midst of the Cold War in the 1970s. The United States and the Soviet Union had just come out the other end of what was probably the most tumultuous time of the Cold War, which saw events such as the space race had its two superpowers fall near the brink of war with the Berlin and Cuban Missile Crisis, and saw the change in leadership with U.S. President John F. Kennedy being assassinated while Soviet winner Nikita Khrushchev was ousted by the Communist Party. In terms of space achievements, the United States finally beat the Soviet Union with the Apollo moon landings. Then, as the 1970s rolled around, the nations entered a period known as détente, or to put it simply, the easing of relation between their rivals. By 1971, talks of a joint American-Soviet mission would finally arise. The possibility of this happening at that time though would be very low as the United States was in the midst of the Vietnam War. The Soviets, defeated in the moon race, moved on to their orbital station program known as Salyut. When the Vietnam War closed in 1975 and the two superpowers finally improved relations, a joint space mission was finally on the horizon. This would be known as the Apollo-Soyuz Test Project. Or in Russian, Experimentalny Polyot Apollon Soyuz. The historic mission would take place in July 1975. It would involve an American Apollo CSM docking with the Soviet Soyuz spacecraft around low Earth orbit. We will go deeper with the spacecraft in a moment. Five astronauts and cosmonauts will be partaking in this mission. Three of them are American and two are Soviet. Thomas Stafford, who is to be the commander, is a veteran of the spaceflight program who participated in Gemini 6A in the first rendezvous of crewed spacecraft and commanded Apollo 10, the dress rehearsal for the moon landing. The ASTP would be his fourth and last mission. Vance D. Brand, the command module pilot, is about to have his first flight. He would later participate in the space shuttle program, his first space shuttle flight being STS-5 on Space Shuttle Columbia. Lastly, Deke Slayton is the oldest of the three astronauts. In fact, Deke is part of the Mercury 7, the first astronauts chosen by NASA. Despite this, the ASTP would be his only flight as he would be kept grounded due to a heart problem. His place as a NASA astronaut isn't wasted though as he had been placed in management roles. At the Soviet side were cosmonauts Alexei Leonov and Valery Kubasov. Alexei Leonov, the commander, was the first man to do a spacewalk back in 1965 in the Voxhod 2 mission. This would be his second and last space flight. One little note that I think deserves a mention is that Leonov could have potentially been the first man on the moon if only the Soviet lunar landing program had been successful. Valery Kubasov, meanwhile, would have his second Soyuz flight after Soyuz 6, which was a failure. He would later fly on another Soyuz to the Salyut 6 space station as part of the Intercosmos program. The Americans will use a Saturn 1B rocket to carry an Apollo CSM along with a docking module to orbit. The Saturn 1B is the predecessor to the legendary Saturn 5 which was used in the moon landings. The two mainly differ with their lower stages. 
Unlike the Saturn V's two large lower stages, the Saturn 1B, only designed to reach Earth orbit, only has one smaller lower stage. The first stage consists of eight propellant containers derived from the Redstone missile clustered around a propellant container derived from the Jupiter missile, then eight fins on the lower end, and eight H1 engines, only four of which gimbaled, or in other terms, helped in turning. The second stage is mostly just the Saturn V third stage with only minor differences. Like with the Saturn V, it had the J2 engine, a giant fuel tank, and then on top the payload, which is an Apollo Command and Service module, and then the fairing with something inside it. The rocket was first used to test the Apollo Command and Service module and also the Apollo Lunar module on the earlier Apollo missions. Later, after the moon landings, the rocket, along with the Apollo CSM, was used to ferry astronauts to the Skylab space station. The Apollo CSM is mostly similar to the one used in the moon missions, with the differences being that it has lesser thrust because it's only in Earth orbit now, and it has more RCS propellant because lesser um, requirement fuel is needed. The ASTP would be the final flight of the Apollo CSM and the Saturn 1B rocket. The docking module was created as an airlock between the Apollo and the Soyuz, which have different cabin pressures. In front was the androgynous peripheral docking system, or APAS, defined by the three leaves. This docking system would later be used in the Mir space station and the International Space Station for the space shuttle and other craft to dock on. This docking module is stored in the fairing compartment where the lunar module used to be and like the lunar module would be obtained by the Apollo CSM by rotating and then docking. Meanwhile, the Soviets will use a Soyuz U rocket to bring a specially modified Soyuz spacecraft to orbit. The Soyuz U is an improved version of the original Soyuz rocket, which is part of the R7 family of rockets. The R7 family also includes the rockets that launched Sputnik 1 to 3, the Vostok that launched Yuri Gagarin, and the aforementioned Voskhod. Like with any Soyuz rocket, it had a first stage consisted of four liquid fueled strap on boosters and the center tank, which becomes the second stage when the boosters detach and the upper stage which will propel our craft into orbit. The spacecraft which will carry our cosmonauts is also known as the Soyuz. It started originally as a part of the Soviet crewed lunar mission program but after being defeated by America, the Soyuz was repurposed for ferrying cosmonauts to the Salyut space stations. The Soyuz spacecraft variant used here, the Soyuz 7KTM, was specifically designed for the ASTP. It would also serve as a technological bridge between the older Soyuz spacecraft and the newer generation Soyuz T spacecraft, which have upgrades to better suit missions to the Salyut space station and the future Mir space station. Unlike the Saturn rockets and the Apollo spacecraft, the Soyuz more modern versions are still used today to ferry astronauts and cosmonauts alike to the ISS with the Soyuz U variant used on the ASTP only being retired back in 2015. Both spacecraft launched on July 15, 1975 in their respective launch centers. The first launch was Soyuz 19 at 12.20 UTC from Baikonur Cosmodrome in the Kazakh SSR. On the eve of a notable event, so let's watch it. Ignition. All comrades wish you the very best of luck. Everything normal.
coming out there from those four strap-on engines around the outside of the bottom of the rocket and four more in the center of the rocket. That's an eight-engine rocket going up there. Seven and a half hours later, at 19.50 UTC in Cape Canaveral, Florida, the Saturn 1B launched. Ready light on. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, engine sequence start. 1, 0, launch commit. We have a liftoff. All engines building up the truck. Side note, the Soviets were actually handling two missions, one being the Soyuz 19 crew and the other was the Soyuz 18 crew on Salyut 4. Soyuz 18 would communicate with the control center in Crimea while Soyuz 19 communicated with the one in Kaliningrad to avoid the conflict of resources. Also, the ASTP crews and the Salyut 4 crew, numbering to seven people, tied the current record for most people in space simultaneously, which was set back in 1969 with Soyuz 6, 7, and 8. After a two-day rendezvous orbit, the two would finally meet and would begin the docking. Three meters. Three meters. One meter. Contact. Capture. We also have capture. Docking completed. Docking is completed, Houston. Well done, Tom. It was a good show. They are looking for us now. Two second hands with you on in both of you. This would mark the first ever time an American spacecraft docked with a Soviet one. Three hours later, the Apollo crew entered the docking module 
and open the hatches between the two spacecraft. That handshake and the mission represents many things. It was a representation of detente and cooling relations. It marked the end of the space race between America and the Soviet Union. And it began a legacy of the cooperation between the U.S. and the USSR, which is now Russia, in space, which will soon culminate into the International Space Station. It's taken us many years to open this door to useful cooperation in space between our two countries. And I'm confident that the day is not far off when space missions made possible by this first joint effort will be more or less commonplace. And may I say, in signing off, here's to a soft landing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. While docked, the two crews conducted activities which included joint scientific experiments, exchanges of gifts and flags, signing certificates, visiting each other's crafts, and eating with each other. 44 hours after docking, the crews returned to their respective spacecrafts, leaving behind the friends they made, closed the hatches, and the docked spacecraft. Shortly after undocking, the Apollo maneuvered to create an artificial solar eclipse which the crew of the Soyuz photographed, and then they would dock once again for a brief amount of time before undocking. Both the Apollo and Soyuz would stay in space for a few more days. Then, the Soyuz would be the first to return back to Earth. Contact of the descent vehicle at 13 hours 50 minutes 54 seconds Moscow time. The parachute has been jettisoned. Meanwhile, the Apollo would conduct a few more science experiments, specifically Earth observation experiments. Five days after undocking, the Apollo would dispose the docking module in orbit and then re-enter Earth.
Although the mission was already a complete success, a mishap occurred during re-entry of Apollo. The reaction control system was inadvertently left on, reportedly by Vance Brandt, after, quote, high noise levels in the cabin causing him to not hear Stafford's call. The propellant used in the RCS was hypergolic, which is known to be toxic and corrosive, and with that being left on, the crew were exposed to it. Vance Brandt even lost consciousness at one point. The Apollo crew splashed down in the Pacific Ocean was received by the USS New Orleans. The crew were then hospitalized in Honolulu. Despite the mishap with the RCS, all the crew survived and the ASTP was successful. With the Apollo Soyuz project finally finished, the United States began their transition from the Apollo era to the space shuttle era. Meanwhile, the Soviet Union continued with the Salyut program, which would later evolve to the modular Mir space station. The space shuttle and the Mir space station would be the subjects of the second ever joint mission and docking of a United States spacecraft and the former Soviet Union now Russian Federation spacecraft which will be known as Shuttle Mir. Houston, Atlanta, we have capture. Copy, capture.